So I'd like to thank you all for coming today. I'm going to tell you about a technology that is revolutionary, uh, revolutionizing biology. A few years ago, with my colleague Emmanuel Charpentier, I invented a new technology for editing genomes. It's called CRISPR-Cas9 and offers the potential to cure uh, human genetic disease. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. So this story really starts with DNA. You probably know that DNA is the code of life that gives cells the ability to function, gives organisms the ability to develop. But when there are mutations in that code, um, it can also give rise to disease. And we know a lot about the sequences of DNA in cells right now, but we, and we know about mutations. But up until now, it hasn't been possible to do much about those mutations. The CRISPR technology allows scientists to make changes to the DNA in cells that could allow us to cure genetic disease. And scientists in Philadelphia showed they could use CRISPR to remove the DNA of an, an integrated HIV virus from infected human cells. The opportunity to do this kind of genome editing also raises various ethical issues that we have to consider. If I had told you or any investor in the late 90s that there were going to be three companies with the foundational patents uh, uh, behind CRISPR, Cas9, which is the most advanced uh, gene editing flavor, I'll say, these days, um, and I had told you these companies are going to cure diseases that have been the scourge uh, of human existence, right? Uh, they're going to cure. They're going to be able to cure pediatric blindness or cancer, as I mentioned before. Part of the CRISPR system is a protein called Cas9 that's able to seek out and cut and eventually degrade uh, viral DNA in a specific way. The CRISPR technology has already been used to change the DNA in the cells of mice and monkeys, other organisms as well. And it was through our research to understand the activity of this protein Cas9 that we realized that we could harness its function as a genetic engineering technology, a way for scientists to delete or insert specific bits of DNA into cells with incredible precision that would offer opportunities to do things that really haven't been possible in the past. Uh, my guess in the late 90s, when investors were chasing dreams, and too much capital chased too few opportunities too soon, that those three companies the cumul would have accumulated in market cap to roughly 200 to 300 billion dollars in market cap, right? They would have because uh, they'd get a royalty on every therapeutic uh, that was going to be developed. And today we think the recurring revenue base in terms of the therapies just for single gene uh, caused g diseases, we think that's a recurring revenue base of 75 billion. They'd get 10% of that. Single genes are responsible for only 2% of all diseases. That's just the beginning. So the idea of 200 to 300 billion dollars, certainly in the bubble, easy, easy. Uh, today, those three stocks in the market uh, together uh, can't even reach five billion dollars in market cap. Now think about it. Apple is a trillion dollar market cap company and it's changed our lives and we love our Apple uh, phones and AirPods and watches. Um, but the, Apple is not curing cancer. It's not curing disease. You might be interested to know that the CRISPR technology came about through a basic research project that was aimed at discovering how bacteria fight viral infections. Bacteria have to deal with viruses in their environment, and we can think about a viral infection like a ticking time bomb. A bacterium has only a few minutes to diffuse the bomb before it gets destroyed. So many bacteria have in their cells an adaptive immune system called CRISPR that allows them to detect viral DNA and destroy it. Uh, these companies, we believe, will but there's so much fear in the marketplace, and there are all kinds of reasons to avoid them. Uh, the cap is too small, or, <laughs> which is this kind of circular reasoning. The cap is too small, or they've just entered human trials. Uh, I'll wait to see what happens. Well, that will be too late if these human trials are successful. One of the first one being pediatric blindness. A baby born blind, you correct that programming error. The baby can see. It works in mice. It works in non-human primates. If it works in human beings, Think about how, how, what the reaction will be. Well, we'd prefer to be in the stocks before that reaction. And you know, one thing I'd like to emphasize, our analysts have domain expertise. Uh, Man Manisha Sami, one of our two genomics analysts, worked in Stanford University's biology research labs for eight years. She experimented with CRISPR gene editing. She's now volunteering at Memorial Sloan Kettering with one of her Stanford professors, and she's still experimenting with different technologies like CRISPR and DNA sequencing, but more important, she's seeing the researchers' reactions to these new technologies, their excitement. 
Uh, so I really believe we, we have domain expertise here and, uh, and Manisha really believes this is going to work. The reason we envisioned using the CRISPR system for genome engineering is because cells have the ability to detect broken DNA and repair it. So when a plant or animal cell detects a double-stranded break in its DNA, it can fix that break, either by pasting together the ends of the broken DNA with a little tiny change in the sequence at that position, or it can repair the break by integrating a new piece of DNA at the site of the cut. So if we have a way to introduce double-stranded breaks into DNA at precise places, we can trigger cells to repair those breaks by either the disruption or incorporation of new genetic information. So if we were able to program the CRISPR technology to make a break in DNA at the position at or near a mutation causing cystic fibrosis, for example, we could trigger cells to repair that mutation. This technology can be employed not only in adult cells, but also in the embryos of organisms, including our own uh, species. And so together with my colleagues, I've called for a global conversation about the technology that I co-invented so that we can consider all of the ethical and societal implications of a technology like this. Thinking about human health, also uh, to do things like make changes in stem cells, which are cells that can give rise to new organs. Uh, also to make changes in animals that are important as uh, models of human disease, such as mice and monkeys. And we think within the not too distant future, it will be possible to actually use this technology to make changes in humans so that we can actually cure diseases that have genetic uh, causes like cystic fibrosis um, and other uh, such disorders. Genome engineered animals and plants are happening right now. And this puts in front of all of us a huge responsibility to consider carefully both the unintended consequences as well as the intended impacts of a scientific breakthrough. Thank you. Wow, so guys, welcome into today's video. My name is Jason. If you did enjoy those clips that did take me a very long time to put together, I would really appreciate if you smash all the buttons down there. So if you did find value at any point, then do be sure to also subscribe to this channel because I bring out content like this every single day for you guys because I want you guys to thrive in the stock market just like I am and I can't wait to have you on this journey with me. So of course, the company that we are talking about today needs no introduction. Of course, it is CRISPR Therapy. Therapeutics. Now, ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, one of my favorite investors of all time, is extremely bullish on CRISPR therapeutics technology. In fact, it's one of her top holdings inside her ARK G ETF, which is her genomic ETF. Now, guys, the genomic revolution is a thing, as Kathy Wood did explain in that earlier clip. The biggest upside surprises are going to come from the genomic space. She does think that this company will be able to cure paediatric blindness and potentially eliminate cancers, which is an absolutely incredible discovery for this company of CRISPR. And right now, CRISPR have had a lovely pullback in their share price, which is why I'm going to bring this chart up in a minute for your attention. But first, let me just tell you a little story. I actually watched a documentary on Netflix a few weeks ago around the new year, which was called Human Nature. Now, anyone can watch this, I would highly, highly recommend it, especially if you are looking for genomic stocks or, of course, you're looking to get involved in pharmaceutical companies. Now, this company does have the full documentary on human nature, which is based all about CRISPR therapeutics and what they're doing right now, where they are transitioning into how they are transitioning in healthcare and what they've been up to. And it is very, very insightful. Um, I learned a ton. So guys, check it out. It's on Netflix. Again, it's called Human Nature and it's a fantastic documentary all about CRISPR therapeutics. So if you are going to invest in this company, then I would highly recommend that. As we can see up on the chart, if I bring it up now, we actually did reach a high last month of $220 for CRISPR, right? It has since had a lovely pullback all the way down to $165, guys, which is about 35% of the share price. So that is a really, really nice uh, pullback that we are seeing in a big pharmaceutical company like CRISPR, and it does have this huge developing industry to cure and vaccinate these diseases. So this could be really huge for this company. Now, CRISPR's had a lot of hype recently from a lot of investors and again Kathy Wood is very bullish. We can also see on here that CRISPR is sitting at the 100 SMA line. So guys this is a really lovely indicator that we can potentially start to see some long uh, action coming into the share price soon because it is retraced back to those 100 SMA lines. Again well, I like to use these technical indicators for optimum entry. 
Now I do actually hold a position in CRISPR and I have been looking to get in on another downward pullback and this has now been presented in this opportunity. So guys, I do want to throw CRISPR onto your radar. If you haven't already put CRISPR on your radar, then today would be a good day to do that. Do some more research into the genomic revolution because it is a thing, it is happening right now all around us. And I think this company moving forward could be a really, really good player inside your portfolio. Guys, I really do expect in the future that this stock could at least 10x if not more and I really don't say that likely because if they manage to cure things like cancers I cannot even imagine where the share price of this pharmaceutical company would go and um, right now they are sitting at just a few billion dollars in market cap so you can imagine once those hundreds of billions start to pour in from investors because they can potentially cure something like blindness and other diseases then this is going to be a company to watch so guys this is just a company again that I want to pop on your radio for today. I hope that you did find a lot of insightful information during this video. If you did, again, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to this channel, it's free and you'll never miss an episode. My name is Jason. I hope you have a fantastic week and ahead and I look forward to seeing you back on my channel soon for some more content on investing. Take care, stay safe and I'll see you guys soon.